Welcome to the first episode of my Pi Game tutorial series. I'm going to start with the basics and work my way up to uh, hopefully finishing a platformer for this series. And then I'm going to make some other episodes where I branch off into other topics like uh, lighting and other random effects that uh, people may find interesting. So uh, first of all, it's assumed that you already know Python for this tutorial. If you don't, uh, there's a great tutorial that I've linked in the description. You only need to read to chapter uh, 16, and then you can come back to this tutorial. I'll also be using Python 3.4.4 for this tutorial. You can work with any version of Python 3 as long as you've already got Pygame installed, but for the installation part of this tutorial, I'm assuming that you're using a version of Python that comes with uh, pip installed, which is some of the newer versions of Python, so if you've got a new version, you should be fine. I'm also obviously assuming that you've already installed Python. So when you install Pygame, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your command prompt. You can do this by pressing the Windows key and R, and then next you're going to want to type in CMD. You could also search for it on uh, your computer, and, but this is the quicker way. If you're using a version that comes with pip pre-installed, normally you can just type pip install pygame. But for some people, and in my case, pip is not recognized as an internal or an external command. And what you do in this case is you navigate to your Python folder, which uh, I don't know where it is for you. You're going to have to find it yourself. Uh, but for me, it should be um, here. Uh, which is the Python, and then the first two numbers of the version you're using. So in my case, 3.4, because I'm using 3.4.4. Um, and then you're going to want to go to the scripts folder. Uh, wait, hold on. And I think this is the default installation location. And then I can just do pip.exe, because it's an executable. And then install Pygame. And then it'll install it. But in my case, I've already got Pi Game. It'll just tell me I already have it. Yeah, there it is. After it brings up this and lets you know it's done and stuff, uh, you're going to want to open up the uh, Python idle, which I'm assuming you know how to do already. And then you're going to want to get to your shell. You're going to well, want to type import Pi Game to make sure that you've installed it correctly, uh, which can take a moment. But you can see I've got no errors here. It'll give you an error if it's not installed correctly. And now that you've got Pygame properly installed, um, I'm going to cover how to open up a window in Pygame. So the first thing you're going to want to do is import Pygame, because this is the library you're using. And then you're also going to want the uh, system library, because it's used uh, later on, you'll see. You're going to want to import um, all the modules from Pygame. And then you're going to want to initiate it with uh, that, with this. And then, this is a comment you don't need to put up there. You're going to want to set your uh, variable with your window size. In this case, I'm just going to use a window that's 400 by 400 pixels. Uh, this is only within the window. It doesn't include the top bar with all the navigation stuff and the window title. But And then the next thing you're going to want to do is create the display, which you do by calling this function. So you use the window size you previously defined right here, or you could just do something like this, but I to make it easier on the eyes, and I, I defined it beforehand. Just put 0 and 32 here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that, what those are right now. Since every game technically runs in a loop, you're going to want to create a loop right here. And this is just your uh, game loop. You're going to want to update the display. Now I'm going to write the event loop. So what this does is um, it loops through every event, um, keyboard or mouse, and I'm not sure if it does anything else, but I think it's mostly just the keyboard and mouse. And then if the event type is quit, which is actually this is one of the weird events. The quit event is when the X is clicked on the window that is for the uh, Pygame process, I guess. I'm telling Pygame to uh, quit right here if the X is clicked for on the window. And then I'm also exiting the program. So this is just so I can close it without having to close the shell and force it to close. 
And then this should work if I didn't do anything weird. Yeah, as you can see right here, I've got a window right here. Um, there's not anything in it, obviously, because I didn't put anything in it. It's just a window. Um, and then if I click X, it'll close. And uh, that's the core of it, but there's a couple more things you're going to want to do. One important thing is to... Well, it's not... You don't have to do this, but I recommend doing it. Uh, you can set the name of your window with the pygame.display.setCaption function. I'm going to set this to my pygame window. Um, another thing I'm going to want to do is set up a clock. I'll explain what this does in a moment. Okay, so what the clock does is it's used for various things uh, within Pygame. But for this, um, I'm using it to uh, keep the game, or just the window itself, because it's not a game yet, running at 60 FPS. Uh, this is the frame rate right here, so we're running it at 60 FPS. This uh, function right here basically pauses the script until it's at the point it should be in time for it to be running at 60 FPS. And then this is just defining the clock. I could call this whatever I want. I could call this timer um, or something like that. And then that would work. Uh, but I'm going to keep it as clock. And then you can see I've got the um, title of my window right here that I would uh, put right here. And then I've also, uh, well, you can't see it, but it's running at 60 FPS now, whereas before it was probably running at something like 500. Okay, one more thing I would like to do is show what happens when, or what you can do with this right here. So this is handled as any normal event. You can just write whatever code you want to happen here when the X is clicked. Um, this loop right here is also used for other events like uh, keyboard presses and mouse movement and stuff like that. Well, not uh, not mouse movement. Well, I don't use it for mouse movement. There's something else, but you can do it for uh, mouse buttons being pressed like left click and right click and stuff. Um, and to show you what happens when you don't just close the window with this, I'm going to write this. I'm going to open the window. And I'm going to bring the shell over here so you can see what the output is, because that's where it's going to print to. Um, and then if I click X, it's going to say I don't want to close. And I can just click it a bunch of times if I want. And then in this case, uh, you just click X on the shell and it'll close. But of course we don't want that. We want it to actually close. So I'm going to leave it like that. And that's the end of this tutorial. I'm going to be covering other things. Um, and hopefully in this tutorial series, I'll finish by having a full platformer game. Um, I'll also branch off into other useful tutorials, like maybe a star pathfinding, uh, Shonen Pi game, uh, sh shadows, well, lighting, and other various things. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you also check out uh, the future episodes.